Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Halloween part 1. Today without face cam, but today we're going to take a look at also the new release of Morpeko. Finally this Pokemon is going to be released. It was first teased during the World Championship and now we're going to know the exact day of the release. So it's going to be the second, 22nd of October here at 10 a.m. And also what we're going to see as well, the, it ends at 10 a.m. on the 28th. What that mean, kind of means as well is that the Halloween event part 2 is going to happen then basically straight afterwards so not all hopes are lost for the pokemon of mimikyu to be released yet maybe it's going to be released for the second part we don't know yet some people are a bit disappointed with the first part but usually the second part is the better one so what you're going to see here is of course that the new pokemon or a real um variant there of the mopeko is going to be released having two different forms those forms can change by using the move or real in the battle what this kind of does is basically just change the type of the move itself so if you use our real electric you're going to yeah, change afterwards to Aurea Dark for the next time you want to use it. So basically, Mopeko is going to be the first Pokemon in Pokemon Go that has three types of coverage with a charge moves, which is quite interesting. And also, the moveset of this Pokemon got changed again for the third time, I think. Um, yeah, since release, which is like basically since it got data mined, which is going to be quite interesting. I'll take a look at this one as well today. But generally speaking, we're just going to take a look here at the event. The graphics, of course, are, as always, from Galax. Best graphics around. We're going to see here, of course, everything about Maopeko. This Pokemon, to try to get this one, you're going to have it during the beginning in Field Research. But um, afterwards, also only from Go Battle League. So it's going to be a Go Battle League exclusive Pokemon after it is going to be out, out of the Field Research. It's going to be more frequently available in the premium track of the Go Battle League rewards. Which I'm curious because it's going to be the first time a specific Pokemon is more common in the premium tracks. And this could open up opportunities for Niantic to get more money from Go Battle League as well in the future. With other Pokemon being maybe more commonly available through this. For example, Legendary Pokemon. But it's going to be available at rank 16 and higher up for Go Battle League. So you have to play a bit. And if you have not started the season, maybe start the season now. Because it is quite important to get this Pokemon. Or like at least if you want to play PvP. Because it's actually a very interesting Pokemon which you're going to take a look at as well. There's going to be a shiny boost here for the Zora as well as for the Umbreon. Zora in the wild and Umbreon in raids. Zora, one of the coolest shiny Pokemon, so I really appreciate this kind of shiny boost. I really hope that we're going to, like, at least that I'm going to be able to get one. Zora also has the unique feature of disguising as your buddy Pokemon. So as soon as you're going to see a buddy Pokemon on the map, it's going to be a Zora and it can be more increasedly likely there as well a shiny. Also, we have two times catch candy and we also have increased chance of getting candy XL from a Pokemon if you hit a nice throw or better. But also, we're going to have a new Dynamax Pokemon in the Ghastly, which is going to be one that I would really recommend you to try to get. Um, this Pokemon has also a Gigantamax form, which I could see being released maybe for the one afterwards because everything towards Gigantamax form got recently added into the code, so that's kind of interesting. There's Gigantamax, Gigantamax Gengar, of course. And so, yeah, this could be a very interesting event in this kind of regard. The raids here, to be fair, kind of something that you can ignore. Like, why would you do raids to get a shiny Umbreon? Like, the Umbreon is still the same, doesn't really make too much sense. But yeah, there are some raids here. They're all not really that special. But as... Um, yeah, normal encounters here. We want to see some quite interesting Pokemon that you definitely kind of don't want to miss. One of them would be, for example, Ariados here. Ariados, like the spinner rack there as in the second slot, is going to be one of the best Pokemon that you can currently run. We're going to have Drifloon, which is really, really good right now as well. And we're going to have Grirod, which is a bit of a difficult Pokemon to get usually. We have Sableye giving you more Stardust, I think, for catching this Pokemon as well, while also getting buffed this season, which is really, really cool. So some interesting spawns, but honestly, nothing that really is too crazy either. Then we're going to have some re uh, field research there. One, of course, we have Mokpeko, which is the main interesting Pokemon there. But we're also going to have Spiritomb in here, which is usually a Pokemon that is only available during Halloween. So if you don't have a Spiritomb yet, or especially a Shiny, try to do the test. We're also going to get a free timed research with Spiritomb as well as more Peko encounters. You're going to get a special decorated map, which we had last year already, and music. We're going to have, of course, showcases, and we're going to have a lot of new avatar items and more opportunities for Niantic to generate a revenue here as well. 
with the two USD um, yeah, research there to get a certain Pokemon. One of them is going to be a Froakie with a hat, and so sadly I am yeah, forced to buy this research, as well as the other one for five US dollar for three times Catch Candy, which I think was a bonus in a previous Halloween event for free before. Um, again, an encounter with the Froakie with the hat on, which I need because it's my favorite Pokemon, so like, what the hell? Hopefully I get a shiny. If you get a shiny, trade me on for sure eventually. But um, yeah, this Pokemon definitely going to be interesting. We also get a Rowlet with a hat, which is a new one. And otherwise we're going to see some very interesting encounters for this one as well. So now we're going to have a little bit of a featured section, of course, for the Aureal Morpeko. First off, Aureal is a very strong move. 100 damage, 45 energy uh, is literally really, really strong. But also, it's going to have a 100% chance of increasing your own attack. And that is going to be very powerful, and that's the only reason why this Pokemon is actually interesting for the Go Battle League, because it has one of the strongest moves ever. If you want to compare it, for example, one of the strongest charge moves right now as well would be Side Strike from Mewtwo. It is 10 less damage and doesn't have a secondary effect to boost itself. And then there is Wild Charge, which is also a very strong move, which has the same damage, the same energy, but debuffs your defense by two stages instead of buffing your attack. And this kind of showcases already on how strong Aurora Real? Aurora Real. Aurora Real is going to be. Anyway, um, and here we're going to be basically some of the dark type Pokemon. I can actually can do Buck there as well. They're currently very good for the Go Battle League, which one are actually spawning from this in the event. There are quite a lot of choices that could be spawning, right? Most of the good ones are actually locked currently behind quest lines, which is not really ideal. So what is actually spawning? I guess not Greninja. Greninja might be spawning for the next event afterwards, for like the part two variant there. But what's actually spawning here is Sableye. Umbreon from Raids, that's going to be great as well for you. Ariados, Driftblim, which is kind of decent. And that is literally basically it. There's not really a lot of the good ones that are actually spawning here. Spirit Tomb actually is quite high up as well. But as you can see, there are quite a lot of Pokemon that could have been cool, like Drapion or like even the Pancham in the wild. Maybe it's going to be for part number two. Hopefully it's going to be for part number two. But um, yeah. It is what it is, it's still kind of sad that we don't get like the really good ones basically, that would be really nice. But Meloma was recently in an event anyway, uh, Manibus was not in an event, I got a ton of them because it was at a regional, it spawns at a regional all the time basically, the Vullaby in the wild which is really cool. But yeah, anyway, how good is more Peko? More Peko is going to be quite an interesting Pokemon. Especially for the Great League, I don't think it's really um, viable for the Ultra League. I think the stats are not enough for it. But as you can see here, the standard form is going to have a quite decent one there. And we're going to have a new moveset as well on it. Um, there was a lot of change. Thundershock was off for at one point. Now it's back on this Pokemon. And now it's Bite, Charge Beam, Thundershock. Also, the Charge moves had changed quite a bit of being Outrage, Seed Bomb, as well as Psychic Fangs. Other than the Aura Reel, which is very different from the starting run in the beginning. It was like Wild Charge, Crunch payback stuff like this and now it is seed bomb psychic fangs outrage which gives you a lot of interesting coverage to be fair that can help you in certain situations especially like psychic fangs is of course what is kind of recommended because it's um, a very cheap move so like you can easily get to it and um, it's a great bait move to have but I also see um, very much point of Seed Bomb because Seed Bomb going to allow you to hit the only type in that can resist really the, um, like double resist at least, the uh, Electric type which is a ground type Pokemon. Yes, of course on paper it's going to be worse than the move that can debuff the opponent as well. But um, I still feel like it's going to be an interesting choice on this Pokemon eventually. But as you can see here, I'm not going to change too much for the two shield scenario. But there also is, of course, the Hangry form, where the only change is that our real is going to be a different type. But as soon as you're going to be in this form, you're also going to be usually a plus one damage. Or like, yeah, generally damage there. But as you can see here as well, you're going to have even a better average rating, which is quite interesting. But we also could put here plus one attack onto it, which is always going to be the case how in this Pokemon is going to be in this form. As you can see, going to be way, way stronger with us. Of course, usually you're going to most likely end up with a little bit of lower HP, um, which I here you can kind of do the lower HP, like current HP for this Pokemon. I don't even see it there, 119. Like, let's say it starts at like 90 HP. Let's see how this is going to go forward. It's still a very solid Pokemon with it. So, like, the attack boost really can help this Pokemon. Makes it very versatile, especially with the, um, yeah, all real also changing its typing. But yeah, this Pokemon definitely going to be very interesting for the Go Battle League. Here we're going to be able to see it side by side as well with the normal form. And here we're going to have um, first, all real, and psychic fangs. And 
for the full belly, then the hangry one, and then we're going to have the seed bomb variant down below. Seed bomb is going to be worse, generally speaking, but as you're going to see here, an average rating of over 500 is quite respectable, and I do think that Morpeko is definitely a Pokemon that you kind of want to get for sure. And yes, you can only get them through quests and go battle league rewards, which means the IVs are not going to be ideal, but still, you might be able to trade with some friends, because I feel like this is going to be worth it for sure. And here we're going to see as well how it's going to be in comparison for the team building tool, and as you're gonna see, there are quite a lot of decent matchups for this Pokemon, like Mandibars for Alligator, even the Malamar apparently, of course, you yeah, the Dark type Pokemon against Malamar, you're gonna have a decent shot, shot here as well. We're going to have a Zimmerod doesn't want to really go up against here as well, and so it's going to be an interesting Pokemon. Do I think it's going to be like meta defining? Definitely not, but I still think it's going to be an interesting one here to do as well, and I still think it's going to be a fun Pokemon to run, and I think it's going to be a very good Pokemon, especially in specific metas. And so this is going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to leave a like, and I will see you then. Bye bye.